Summer's just a couple months away. And one of the most look forward to desserts is strawberry shortcake. That nice fluffy cake with that yummy whipped cream and those delicious strawberries. Mm, I could taste it as we talk. So today's recipe is for gluten-free, keto-friendly strawberry shortcake with, of course, that gluten-free, keto-friendly, yummy whipped cream to put underneath those delicious strawberries. If you want a printable version of this, then check out my website at JanetsDeliciousLowCarbKitchen.com. You can find a printable version of this and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to hit that little notification bell. That way you can be notified every time I put out a new video. And while you do that, let's get cooking. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Line an 8 by 8 inch square baking pan with parchment paper. In a large mixer bowl, combine 1 cup of almond flour, 1 fourth cup of coconut flour, 3 fourths cup of whey protein powder. Now if you don't have whey protein powder, you can use more almond flour to replace the whey protein powder but it will affect the texture and possibly the lift of the cake. It'll still taste good, but the texture will be slightly different. Add one cup of monk fruit sweetener or granulated sweetener of your choice, a half teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of xanthan gum. Do not leave this out. This is your binding agent. You need this to hold all of your ingredients together. Whisk these all together until they're fully combined and no lumps are in the flour. Add a half cup of butter that's been melted and cooled. Make sure it is completely cool before you add it. Then add a half cup of sour cream. Make sure the sour cream is room temperature. It helps them to mix in a lot smoother when it's room temperature. 1 teaspoon apple cider vinegar, 3 large room temperature eggs, again make sure these are room temperature. When your ingredients is all room temperature, it mixes together smoother, which creates a smoother batter, which creates a more fluffy texture in your cake. So make sure everything's room temperature. And 1 tablespoon of vanilla extract. Beat these together on low 20 to 30 seconds or until they're fully combined. Scrape down the sides and push all the batter to the center of the bowl. Let the batter sit for 3 minutes so the coconut flour can absorb some of the moisture and the xanthan gum can start binding all the ingredients together. This is a must. You definitely have to let the batter sit for three minutes. You want that coconut flour to be able to absorb some of the moisture. That way your batter can get a little bit thicker, which results in a fluffier cake. So after it's set for the three minutes, give it a little bit of a stir just to make sure that everything is binding together. The batter should be a little on the thick side. It's not going to be thin and watery like some cake batters are. This is going to be nice and thick. Add one tablespoon of baking powder and one teaspoon of baking soda. Beat these on low for about 15 seconds or just until the baking soda and baking powder are fully combined and fully distributed in the batter. You want to make sure that you add the baking soda and baking powder after you have let the batter sit and thicken up for those three minutes. Baking powder and baking soda start becoming active as soon as they come in contact with liquid. So in order to get the best rise for your cake, you add these in right before you put it into the oven. And that's why we wait until after the batter has sit and then add the baking powder and baking soda. So you can get the best lift that way. Once you've added them in, scrape down the sides of the bowl and again, push all the batter to the center of the bowl. Spoon the batter into your prepared cake pan. Now again, this batter is going to be thick, so it's not going to be one that you can just pour into the cake. You'll need to spoon it in. 
and then use a spatula and spread it evenly throughout the entire pan. Bake for 20 to 30 minutes or until a tester comes out clean. Let it cool in the pan completely before you try to cut it. When this first comes out of the oven, a tester should be able to come out clean, but the cake will still be soft. So don't think it's underdone just because it seems like it's soft. It's supposed to be soft when it first comes out. It continues to cook and firm up as it cools in the pan, but you have to let it sit in the pan, otherwise you're gonna ruin your cake. So make sure it sits in the pan and let it cool completely before you try to cut into it. A couple things you might notice when you take your cake out is one, the top will be nice and golden, and it also may slightly deflate while it's cooling. It shouldn't be a drastic deflating, but it may possibly deflate just a little bit because it all depends on how it's been mixed, how much air has been in the batter. Different things can all come into play when you are using gluten-free batter. So it may possibly deflate a little bit after it cools, but it's no big deal if it deflates a little bit. If you have a drastic indention, then something might have went a little bit wrong, <laughs> but it, it's okay if it deflates just a little bit. Now, if you don't like the top of your cake to be that golden or you're worried about it deflating too much, you can divide this between two eight inch round cake pans and then check it at about 15 minutes and see if a tester comes out clean. You can do that, but if you do that, your cake is most likely going to be a little on the flat side. It's not going to be as puffy as it would be if you use a square eight by eight cake pan that we're using here. Once it has cooled completely, cut the cake into the desired size and store it in an airtight container at room temperature until you're ready to use it. Once you're ready to serve the cake, place your desired size of cake piece on a plate. Top it with your desired amount of our Cool Whip Substitute, which I'll be giving you the recipe to that in just a few minutes here. Then top the Cool Whip Substitute with your desired amount of strawberries. I usually take one or two and just cut them into quarters and sprinkle them over the top of the Cool Whip Substitute. And there you go, it's ready to eat. For the Keto Cool Whip Substitute, in a large mixer bowl, combine four ounces of softened cream cheese. Make sure it's just softened, not melted. I usually just measure out the four ounces of cream cheese and leave it out on my countertop for maybe an hour just until it's nice and soft. You want it to be soft enough to be able to mix in easily, but not so soft that it's turned to water. So soft enough to be able to cream together. Add one third cup of powdered swerve or powdered sweetener of your choice and one tablespoon of vanilla extract. Now you can adjust the amount of vanilla that you want according to your taste. If you just want a very, very faint vanilla taste, then you can just use one or two teaspoons of the vanilla extract. But if you're like me and you like to be able to taste a little bit of the vanilla, I use the one tablespoon because I like the taste of vanilla in my Cool Whip substitute. So again, you can adjust that according to your taste, how much vanilla you think you'd like your Cool Whip to taste like. Then attach a whisk attachment to your standing mixer and whisk on high for one to two minutes or just until the mixture is creamy. Once it's all nice and creamy, then set it aside and you'll need another mixer bowl. Or if you don't have another mixer bowl, you can, you can spoon the cream cheese mixture into another bowl and set that aside and use the same mixer bowl as you used. That's what I do. I just use the same mixer bowl. Either way, you just need the cream cheese mixture separate right now. And in a large mixer bowl, place one cup of heavy whipping cream and use the whisk attachment on your standing mixer and beat on high for two to three minutes or just until soft peaks begin to form in your cream. You do not want the peaks stiff. 
the, the peaks should still collapse. When you stick a spoon in your cream, you should be able to scoop it out, but it should still be soft enough that it's not quite holding its own shape. You don't want it firm right now. You want it thick and you want to be able to spoon it out. You don't want it so hard that it won't come off your spoon. Next, add your cream cheese mixture and beat on high for another one to two minutes or until the peaks are stiff. Now's the time that you want your mixture more on the stiff side. You don't want to overbeat it because if you overbeat it, you'll have hard cream. We don't want hard cream. We just want it stiff and firm enough to be able to spoon it out. And when you spoon it out, it's going to hold its own shape and not going to slide off your spoon. In my standing mixer, it takes just under two minutes for the peaks of my mixture to be the right consistency. Everybody's mixer is different. So basically what you're looking for is you're wanting the peaks to be stiff. When you put a spoon in there, you want to be able to spoon it out and it sticks to your spoon. And when you turn your spoon upside down, it should still hold its shape and not just completely slide off right away. It should be firm enough to be able to hold its own shape. Once you're done mixing that, put the Cool Whip substitute in an airtight container and store it in the refrigerator until you're ready to use it. Now the great thing about this Cool Whip, this cool whip substitute as to compare to my Keto Whip Cream that I've showed you before the recipe for that, the great thing that I like about this recipe is that it doesn't deflate on you. Homemade whipped cream, generally you have to use it within the same day, otherwise it does deflate on you. This does not. This, you can keep it in your refrigerator for a few days and it is just fine. It will not deflate on you because it's got that cream cheese texture to it, so it gives it a thickener, a stabilizer. That way it doesn't deflate on you right away. So this is great because... You don't have to worry about the next day going in to get some Cool Whip substitute to put on your strawberry shortcake and it be flat. You don't have to worry about that. It'll still be nice and fluffy and tasty. And there you go. Keto Strawberry Shortcake with Keto Cool Whip Substitute. Eat and enjoy. And that's our recipe of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that big fat thumbs up and hit that big fat subscribe button. You can leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make. And I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking. Mm -hmm.